What is going on you guys? Nick here with another video. One of my viewers recently requested seeing an explanation of what every screen in Pi Hole is and what it does, and I think that's a great idea for a really short video that will hopefully help a lot of people. So here we go. Once you log into your Pi Hole at the IP address that you have set for it, you're first greeted with the dashboard. This shows you, of course, your total queries, queries blocked, percentage of queries that were blocked, and domains on the block list. There are people out there, block enthusiasts, I suppose, who try to get their block percentage as high as possible. While it is important to make sure that you're blocking as much tracking and advertising as possible when running a pie hole, you also don't have to go crazy. You don't have to try and shoot for things over 50%. My network blocks about 14.7% of all queries. Some of my, device run, my devices run built-in ad blockers, which blocks things as well. Uh, some of them use VPNs, which sort of bypasses Pi-hole entirely, so you don't always see the advertising on those. And that's pretty much why my percentage is what it is. You should typically shoot for 20 to 30% if Pi-hole is your only ad blocker. Now, this breaks down query types. Uh, you don't have to worry too much, but an A record is something like Google.com, the IP address of Google.com, or the IP address of Microsoft.com, or something like that. Quadruple A is the IP version 6 version of just a normal A record, so it's the IPv6 address of that same Google.com, etc. SOA is start of authority record. It typically stores important information about a domain, like uh, like an email address for the administrator of the domain and, and other information like that. PTR is reverse DNS lookup. TXT is where you can put information about your domain, uh, including things like a center policy framework record, which means you know these IP addresses are allowed to send email addresses, other ones aren't. NS is name server, and then other in HTTPS, you know, so on and so forth. You can look at upstream servers, which you can see where my upstream servers are. And then you can look at your top permitted domains. So you can see a lot of the permitted domains on my network tend to be Apple domains. A lot of block domains tend to be telemetry domains. So, you know, API data.adobe.io, self events data, Microsoft.com, Google Analytics app measurement, which is still Google, Firebase Analytics, which is also Google, Google Ads, which of course is Google, you know different telemetry data. You can see top clients, so if you know the IP address of certain devices on your network, you can see which ones are getting the most blocked requests. I'm sorry, this is the top client's total request, so this would be your most active devices on your network. And then your blocked clients are, of course, the clients that are sending and receiving the most blocked DNS requests. So for me, you know, if I, well, if I was, you know, suspicious, I would look into 10.0.0.174 and try and figure out which device that is on my network. Pretty easy to do. You can typically go into your router. A lot of routers will show you what type of device it is, even if it uses some sort of Mac spoofing or Mac cloaking. It will typically be able to determine the manufacturer. If not, you can check the devices on your network and see which device has that IP address just by looking at the IP settings on the device itself. So that's pretty handy. And this is just the dashboard. If you go to your query log, you get more detailed information about the DNS queries that are happening on your network. Uh, I wish that no web interface ever did this. I wish it was show all by default. It seems insane to me that anybody would ever wanna just see it in pages blocks of 10. So one great thing about this is you can come in and you can choose to whitelist blocked IPs and blocked domains, uh, which will allow you know your clients on your network to then access those dom domains. So if you have pieces of websites breaking or something that you need the functionality on, you can come in and you can whitelist that by trying to go to that service, letting it fail, and then checking your query log. It's it's. A pretty helpful thing you can also say hey you know what's that suspicious thing I better go blacklist that thing yt3.ggpht.com well that's YouTube so I actually don't want to block that and you can even see you know which IP it was that had that and I'm pretty sure that's this device let's see no I'm dot 169 so I'll have to figure out what 175 is but it's probably just a device trying to talk to YouTube and I'm okay with that for the most part. 
So then you can look at long-term data and you can see graphics, which will show, you can choose your date ranges and different things like that. You can look at long-term query logs, top lists, you can adjust your whitelist, which is pretty handy. You can see I've unblocked specific Facebook domains to allow Facebook to work, but it blocks, still blocks a significant amount of the tracking domains. So the only data Facebook gets about devices on my network are is the data that the user inputs to Facebook. And you know, they may sneakily get other data and things, but without using the Facebook app, you typically don't leak too much data as long as what you're putting out there is not highly personal information. And then your blacklist, which is fantastic. This is the manual blacklist. So this is things that I've added myself so you can see all of these different things that zion.cnn.com sounds pretty creepy zion telemetry api cnn.io you know it just it gets better and better so then you can go group management you can look at different groups of clients you can look at specific clients you can block specific clients uh, block specific domains and then here are the ad lists now this is the part where you'll have to go outside of piehole to figure out what you want so you can download these ad lists or just copy the URLs of these ad lists really. And that's what I recommend you do. You can import ad lists as TXTs uh, yourself. I strongly encourage you to just use the URL based ones. That way when they get updated, they automatically get updated here. And then if you're having problems with your pie hole, you can temporarily disable it, which is pretty handy because you can use it to troubleshoot problems, fix the problem, and then come back and start it and test and see if what you did actually fixed it. Pretty nice. Tools, you can run a pie hole diagnosis, which I've never had to do. You can update gravity, so you just click update and then updating, this may take a while. Please do not navigate away from or close this page. Oh, well great, that'll give me some time to talk to you about today's sponsor, which is Boredom. Where would we be without Boredom? You certainly would not be watching this video right now, and I certainly would not have done all of these things. Great, up to date, good, so I don't have to ramble about the importance of boredom, awesome. Uh, so you can look at find block domains, audit log, you can tail out these things, these Linuxy things. You don't have to worry about a lot of this. You can explore your network a little bit. You can grab MAC addresses and hardware addresses, which is pretty handy. You can plug those MAC addresses into something like MAC vendors and get the vendor of the device to help you determine what device that is on your network. And then of course the settings page. So this again just shows you system info. I have my Pi hole running at a VM instead of on a Raspberry Pi, so I can allocate resources as I see fit, which is a very, very nice thing. See ad lists, so you can see, please use group management pages, so they've moved that now. So you can look at your upstream DNS, where you want to look for your DNS queries, and then you can actually use your Pi hole as a DHCP server. I don't, I have a USG that I use, but you know, it's kind of a nice thing to have. I can have a virtual machine that runs for free doing DHCP for me. Here you can tweak different settings of the API and the web interface, which is pretty cool. So you can see mine is using the midnight dark theme, but you can tell it to automatically adjust based on your browser theme. And then you can see here show everything and record everything, which I want the highest level of analysis on my own network. And then teleporter is a handy thing if you ever have to move your pie hole to another pie hole or you want to export your data or you just want to clone it for somebody else that you're setting it up for you can back up this data and then you can restore it to the new pie hole as soon as you get going on the uh, in the web interface during the setup it will actually ask you if you want to restore backup and if you somehow skip that you can always come back here and hit restore so it's pretty handy Local DNS, that's if you're actually on a domain and you want to use local DNS records so you have a host name like, I don't know, like uh, Jellyfin, like I have a Jellyfin server on my network. So, you know, you want to use Jellyfin as a host name so it could be like, you know, jellyfin.nickelgandhi.local or something like that. You can put in manual DNS records so that if somebody tries to go to that jellyfin.nickelgandhi.local, it will say, oh, that's this IP address and it'll direct them where they need to go. Of course, log out just logs you out. 
donate is the donate button which i encourage all of you to do so that this stuff can stay free and stay open source it's not easy doing things for free let me tell you it can pretty quickly bankrupt you so that is all of the pages of pie hole pretty much as quickly as possible i know we didn't go into great detail on some of them however i think this is a pretty good crash course just to give you a rough idea of what it is of what things are and what they do Feel free to slow this video down if I talk too quickly or speed this video up if I talked too slowly. Uh, make sure you like this video if you liked it or tell me why you didn't like it if you didn't in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. Uh, feel free to explore my other videos. I cover a crazy wide range of content. My channel uh, slogan ought to just be I have no clear direction and no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> Thanks a lot again for watching guys. I will see you in the next video.